Hello everyone, Larry Satchwell here. It's actually November 14th, but it's a Sunday morning and there's so much less noise pollution, except for that plane above my head. I woke up this morning and looked at the temperature. It said it was 32 and we did have a light frost last night. This is what it looks like on the car window. It's not heavy, but it's enough to kill tender plants. It was a windy day yesterday. And as you can see, the leaf guard is doing its job. It's caught these leaves. And as frustrating as that build was, I'm glad it's over and it's doing its job. I only feed the fish about once a week right now and I'm using the fall and spring fish food from the pond guy. It's basically, I think, just a wheat germ kind of thing. They're gonna go into a dormancy, not hibernation, but they shut down over the winter. The last perennials I added was blanket flower up there. Arizona uh, red, I think it's called. Nothing else lately. I'm gonna run an experiment in these two beds. Uh, the frost didn't kill the pepper last night, although it's only 34 right now, so it may start showing some signs later on in the day. In these two beds, I'm going to be um, running an experiment. I went ahead and planted red clover in this one as a cover crop. And in, on that one over there, I've got a big hole there ready for a wheelbarrow full or two of manure. And I'm going to cover that one in black plastic and see which one does better with the Georgia crazy worms. I'm actually not seeing that many in the garden right now. And I think by not covering them with leaves this fall, uh, it'll be a lot better. I'm gonna switch back and forth here from the flower beds to the garden. The uh, Shasta daisies really came out well. Sometimes when you buy those cheap ones, they don't have very good roots. The uh, yarrow here, I'm very pleased with. I've got a yellow one. I planted the yellow one in amongst uh, the blues that are gonna come up next fall. The foxgloves here are doing great. This one should spread some seeds. Uh, that was from uh, early buy uh, at Lowe's. Uh, gotta remember they're perennials, so that wasn't a great investment, although if it spreads some seeds, it will. We have a beautiful patch of these up at the arena, and I brought some of those down and transplanted those uh, about midweek last week. So they should take off here and do okay over the winter. I used the cover last night, zipped it all up, but when I came home from um, the big box store, this is what I found. Well, this is the first windy day. I uh, had it tied down and it appears that uh, that has ripped off. I had it on these cleats and I thought that would stay on there, but it didn't. Hmm, frustrating. Nothing died. Freeze tonight. So the vertica is still out on it. You can't tie it down. I guess over here I could staple it to the boards, but I think that's going to really hinder it. I might use a uh, like a batten and put it over and then just put a couple of screws in there. But the verdict's still out. Oh, I just saw this. The wind blew over my sunflower last night. So I'm glad I got that picture of it last week when I did. Lettuce. This lettuce was not covered last night. I got to need to get the glass on here, but it will come back, I think. The strawberries are covered, ready for winter. And I did finally clean out this bed. Pulled up the cover just to prove it. Got uh, all down through there. I cleaned out all the big weeds. The strawberries do a lot better in my zone if I keep them covered like this over the winter. But as a consequence, the weeds grow in there as well. Looks like the wind pulled the shade off of that one. The potatoes didn't get burnt, but... Uh, there's some nice potatoes in there. We've been eating on those pretty regularly. In my video earlier this morning, I failed to mention the absence of the candle lilies. This year, I've tried to cut them back early and I've done it both ways. I've left the stalks on here over winter and I've cut them back. 
Cutting them back, if we have a real cold winter, they will suffer a little bit, but they are so thick in here, I don't think it's gonna matter. I felt bad afterwards taking the, uh, the whole purpose of cutting them back was try to get rid of some of those uh, leaf curlers that are make it look so bad in the end of the year. But in cutting them back, I also realized it was quite a habitat for a lot of critters. I saw a lot of green anoles and a lot of green tree frogs. By a lot, I mean the tree frogs. I think I've saw five or six of them. The anoles, uh, again, up maybe upwards of 10. I cut them back at ground level. And I didn't realize they were in there until I was picking them up and hauling them down to the compost pile. So I think I, I did it like a week and a half ago. So I think they've had plenty of time to find a different place to hide and to uh, recover from that. I hope so. I hate not making habitat for our natural wildlife here. I've decided not to overwinter my worms this year. I'm gonna put this top pile because it still has quite a bit of fresh manure on it. Not, it's not hot, but it's definitely not decomposed yet. I'm gonna put that one right here on top of this. This is a feed sack I put in there to separate the piles. Ooh, there's a lot of nice worms in there. This is real easy digging. They'll be able to get shelter before the sun goes down. On the finish to the bottom one, I'm gonna put over here a side dressing. So this is the middle level. I've had some pumpkin in here, leftover jack-o'-lantern, and look how they have multiplied. My goodness. So I'm doing this right now because this is the brightest time of day. This great uh, bed is not in the greatest spot, but these worms are gonna seek the darkness very quickly. So I'm just gonna use this as side dressing here on my carrots and spinach. I cannot believe how many young worms I have in here. Immature ones, my goodness. One of the things that's difficult about this bed is that you can't reach to the other side and there's no openings over there, so I'd have to take the whole thing off. I can use it if I use this trowel. So that's where I'm gonna leave you today. The next time I record an update, it'll be after Thanksgiving. I hope Thanksgiving's a lot better this year. We uh, didn't have Thanksgiving last year, but now um, everybody that's gonna get vac vaccinated has been vaccinated. And so I think we're gonna risk it. Oh, I like these worms. Thanks for watching. Ah, and there it goes. Huh, I gotta rethink this whole thing. Well, here's what I've come up with a quick solution. And I think this will work. I was gonna staple it, but I, I looked at the staples and the longest ones I had were three eighths of an inch and they just didn't look long enough. So instead I got, I got some, uh, Fence staples, these are just the little three quarter inch ones. And I'm gonna put that in the wood here. This is a baling twine. Cut that off, I'm gonna put one down here on the corner, on the end, so that it doesn't move this direction. four staples. I should have brought out five, but I didn't think about doing the end until just now. So I'm going to put two on this side. I think that thing's going to come up with it. Nope. It's still tied on. All right. whole thing came apart now. So now I can tie this frame down 
if the plastic comes off and the frame is tied down, I'm going to take it back to Home Depot. You can see this thing's like a parachute. And these flaps are open. Well, I think I look good in backlight, so this is where I'm going to leave you today again. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know this doesn't address the plastic flying up. Uh, I've got some thoughts on that, but if you have any suggestions, I'll be glad to listen to them. Thanks for watching, and have a great Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for.